Don't you cry for me, baby. I got eyes on you, baby. Just look alive for me, baby. What is up, guys? How we doing? Alright, so, what are we doing today? We are working on the next mission for the campaign mode. So here's kind of the general plan is uh, in that last mission we sent our first rocket into orbit we put uh, I think 12 satellites into an orbit um, and we're kind of starting that first constellation but there's a little little hang up with it and um, we only launched 12 out of the 20 we were trying to launch because we were a little under our mass expectations um, we did complete the contract though so we've got 12 million budgeted to um, budgeted to our company right now to work with not going to do a contract this time. Instead, what I'm going to do is actually launch another satellite payload. But I'm going to redesign that rocket that I launched because there were some issues with it that I kind of saw afterwards. Um, and I want to do kind of a better job with it this time. So the goal is to get a um, get another satellite payload in orbit, but we're going to launch all the satellites that we put on it. I think we're going to put fewer satellites on the rocket initially. Um, but that's going to help cut down on the costs because what we did last time was we packed a bunch of satellites on there and then didn't launch them, which is kind of a waste. So if we pack fewer satellites, we're not going to be paying for those extra satellites just to dump them overboard because I think each satellite cost like $70,000, um, which is a little little pricey, especially when uh, when money counts now. So we're going to work on... I want to make a nice upper stage to start off with. Do... Uh, We'll do channels probably. Channels usually look good. And add an engine. I think right now the only engine we have unlocked is our um, pressure fed, a very basic one. There's liquid pressure fed one. Um, not a great engine, like not a not a great performance wise engine, but it'll do. Go ahead and stick that on there. Let's look at our performance analyzer. You want a thrust-to-weight ratio that's going to be able to actually get a payload into orbit. Tuck that in. Okay, so what do we got? Uh, 1.9 minutes burn time, 1.73 thrust-to-weight ratio. So we can let's make the nozzle longer for one, because that's going to increase our burn time and efficiency. Bring our thrust-to-weight ratio to 1.5. And then tuck this guy in a little bit more. Just to conserve some space, clip it in. Okay, pretty happy with that. Next, we'll do our inner stage. Actually, before we do our inner stage, let's put the payload on there. So I've got... Um, 
I have a pre-made satellite that I want to use. So this guy right here. But I don't know why this is rotated weird. Let's, uh, let's bring this. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, we might have to connect that first. Let's go here. Got to turn that off. Okay, now we rotate this like so. Maybe is it, is it this one? Which one is it? I need to ro rotate one of these. Maybe it's this guy. No. Maybe this is the wrong satellite. One of these is actually set up, right? Maybe it is this guy. Okay. Rotate him. And then we'll set up our inner stage. Uh, another thing that I did wrong with that last message, me, a mission, I can't talk, with that last mission was the um, inner stage force was way too high. I didn't drop it down. So really, I want very little force on it. Even 10% might be too much, but I don't know if there's a way to change that directly. Uh, zero is too little, but for as small as these satellites are, um, really don't need a lot of force to separate them. So... That might be too strong. I'm not sure. Connect, 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 connect. Come on. Come on. Come on. You gotta be kidding me. Uh, part connections. Well, if I turn part connections on, that might make it work better. There we go. Dang it. Okay. So we've got interstage there. Looking good so far. Now what we should be able to do, copy, paste that. I'll make this a little shorter. Oh, that's not right. Stack them. But that didn't stack right. Let's try that again. Do that. Turn the auto resize off. There we go. Okay, now we can just copy and paste these suckers. Got one, two, three, four, five. We're going to do ten total on this guy. So that's going to be our payload. We've got ten satellites, looks like. Let me check my staging. Yep, ten satellites. Perfect. And that gives us 3,000 meters per second of delta V for that stage, which should be more than enough. I'm actually going to turn that down. Save on uh, fuel costs by making that a little smaller and our engine can also make a little smaller. We get a thrust to weight ratio of 1.1 there so I can reduce cost even further by dropping this down. That's as cheap as it gets. That gives us 79 thousand for the engine but the thrust to weight ratio is a little low we'll do 60 percent gives us almost 0.9 on the thrust to weight ratio 4,000 meters per second delta v that's even that's too many or too much um just do two three thousand eight hundred yeah it's still plenty we'll do 1.8 uh 1.5 3,400 i want to kind of have it at three 1.2. Okay. I think that'll do for our upper stage. Nice and small. Uh, oop. Do that again. I wish they would just default to having these not auto resize because when you're doing like non standard stuff like this where it's beveled on the edge, it always like resizes when you don't want it to. And it's super annoying. Uh, panels, channels, vents. What should I do? Piles, rivets, crossbeams. Might just do panels or hexagon. Nah, hexagons look weird. We'll do panels. Actually, gonna bring the detachment force up on this one. Looks good. Oh, and I need to make sure we've got the right fuel type selected. Because we do not have liquid oxygen and methane unlocked. We need to use nitrous oxide. And let's look at what our fuel options are methanol, 
ethanol, ethanol, but more kerosene. We don't have kerosene yet either. Or do we? Uh, no, I think we do have kerosene. Um, maybe we'll do that. So that gives us a 0.1 thrust to weight ratio. And drop that down, decrease cost a little bit. 0.82. 85,000 for the engine. Liquid kerosene. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that is about as cheap as we can make that upper stage. Because realistically, like, let me get rid of this. So far, the rocket costs $150,000. And then the payload cost is going to be constant no matter how efficient I make it. So we can set that over here for now. Okay. Then we'll add our first stage now going in reverse order um, we're going to use a solid rocket make that a hybrid platform because we've got the hybrid rockets unlocked which are really nice because they give you good thrust but also um, they give you good thrust and um, What's the word? What's the word? A pretty good efficiency, and you can control them, which is really nice. So let's look at, let's make sure our staging's right. Nope, it's not. There we go. Stage 1 has 3,000 meters of delta V, and stage 2 has 3,600. So 6,000 meters per second delta V total. Let's add the payload, make sure that's still accurate. Uh, and while we're at it, we'll add the fairings as well. I did it again. Go away. Stop auto resizing, please. There we go. Shift this down. Right there. Go away, texture. Don't want you. Okay, that looks good. We'll add that. Too big. We can shrink that down. We'll add you. Actually, we'll just get rid of you altogether since we're just doing this. Perfect. Okay, so that's the fairings. We have a total of 3,457 meters per second of delta V. What is the deal here? These are supposed to be at the top. <sighs> I do hate how the um, how this thing keeps like resetting every time. Go here. It's it's really not an intelligent system. Fairing base. Fixy stage. All stages. There we go. Five thousand four hundred forty-two so far. So that's a little. We're going to need to make the first stage bigger. Pull this down. Okay, let's see. So yeah, next step is going to be making the first stage bigger. Uh, there we go. Do a beveled edge for the first stage as well, like that. Slap our rocket on there, and then tuck that sucker up, like that. Okay, so we've got 5,437 meters per second of delta V. I kind of want to make this one launcher be a little bit more capable than just doing this mission. I want to be able to reuse this design. So I'm going to give it a good bit of delta V here. 10, that gives us 6,000. And a pretty solid starting thrust to weight ratio. So we can make this, this here more efficient for sure. Um, probably give it like 2 thrust to weight ratio of 2. How does that impact the cost? That's cheaper. Can we make it better though? Like if we drop the throat size down and then increase the size of the rocket itself, that's 1.2. 
I really do want to have a thrust to weight ratio of 2. Mm, 1.7 is fine. You know, 1.8 is good. That's pretty cheap, and it gives us a lot of delta V. Make that a little bit bigger. Also, this is operating in a vacuum. So, let's make sure that our first stage is actually going to have the like projected performance we want here. Uh, okay, so we've got the first stage selected. Let's see how it performs at altitude. Efficiency gets better. It only gets better. Okay. Uh, we can drop our nozzle length, though. And start making this a better system for low altitude flight. Okay, that gives us better performance a little bit. Maybe another 200 meters per second of delta V by changing that. Or at least, like, that's what the alt, uh, that's what this says here, this number right here. 3,746, so, like, if I set it to one kilometer and then increase, it actually reduces my delta V. So I want to decrease it until right there, where it stops going down. Pretty small engine. Other alternative is we look at um, doing multiple engines, but I don't think that's going to be cheaper. So... Actually, let's let's try that though. Um, we'll do one here, and then add maybe two. Do two hybrid rocket engines like that. We can make them as small as we can though. Select the route. Scoot them in like that. Okay, now let's see how we can adjust the performance here. It is underpowered a little bit. Sixty percent. Gonna try and get the performance of this setup to be the same as the other one and then we can compare the two see which one's better. Okay, so we've got 3,702, 3,714. So I guess our, our one engine is more efficient, and the cost is pretty close to the same. Because these are 267, yeah, so that's going to be cheaper as well. So we'll go with that. Hello, I'm from Turkey. Well, hello. Glad to see people all the way from Turkey are tuning in. That's cool. How are you doing? Um, okay, so I think that's good for the engine design. Can we bring this down a little bit and bring this in a little bit and then check our total delta V for the mission. 6,400, so it should be enough, but I, I do want to actually improve our delta V for this mission a little bit. Um, I took a lot of fuel out of this upper stage tank. I might put it back in. Make it a little bigger. 6,600. Not bad. Yeah, it, it is cool how uh, like how popular Simple Rockets 2 is internationally. Um, I think a lot of my viewers are from India and like the Middle East. Um, which you don't really see that. A lot of, a lot of uh, video games tend to have a market that's big in the U.S. and then that's it. But this one's been a really diverse community, which is cool. Okay, so we're going to do a little paint job now, make it look nice. Take the striped color, let's do, make sure that these are white, and then we'll do black for these, looks good. And then we'll do the same for the inner stage, make the inner stage striped as well. Striped, paint job, two. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I kind of want to add a little bit to make this bit look nicer. So one thing we can do is take this. Make like a little ring here. 
and then connect that back. Make sure that that covers it properly. Go to the go to the paint tool again. Do primary. Uh, do all actually. There we go. That gives us a black ring there. And then let's do the same for the top. So, oops, did it again. Stop doing that. Slap, slap that guy there. Please go back. There we go. And then pull this guy down. Okay, I like how that looks. It's a little like kind of squarish, I guess. You can make this fairing a little longer to make it look a little, a little kind of narrower, thinner, like a rocket should be. Okay, 1.3 million. And that's with the payload. So let's actually um, let's get rid of the fairing base and the fairing nose cone, and let's move the payload off to make sure that our cost is pretty good. Okay, so the launcher costs six million. Uh, not six million, six hundred fifty-nine thousand dollars, which is pretty good. It's not the cheapest one that I've done in this game, but I did want to kind of over-engineer it to um, better match like the payload expectations, because I want to do some bigger payloads with this. Um, kind of use this as my like general small satellite launcher. Okay. Let's put the payload back on now and check our staging because that is the most important thing. Solid rocket motor fires. The fairing separates, the first stage separates, second stage ignites, and then the payload is deployed. We have 6,245 meters per second and the mission is going to cost $1.3 million. I'm going to write that number down, $1.3 million. Okay. Uh, I think we're good to go. Staging looks good. Everything looks good. Um, so I'm going to save this craft. What should we call it? Um, small launcher. Small launcher. SR2. Save. Let's do it. Send this bad boy into space. Is the audio muted on this? Well, let me check settings here. Sound mixer. Oh, it is. That's uh, that's unfortunate. Bring the volume up a little bit. There we go. Okay. So we're on the launch pad. Everything looks phenomenal. Let me check the map. Oof, that is that is super laggy. Let's get rid of all of that. Orbit details. Item visibility. Craft orbits. Craft icons. Go away. There we go. That's faster map okay so what we're gonna do is I want to put this satellite constellation on a 60 degree incline so I'm gonna point um, let's see, this is 45 I want to point at 30 so that is a 60 degree angle um, off the equator but then I want to overshoot that a little bit let's do like two degrees and the reason I'm going to overshoot is because there is an orbital velocity because um, the rotation of the Earth, or the rotation of Drew, is putting a little bit of velocity um, directly along the equator when I launch from the equator. And so there is going to be, it's going to change the angle of my inclination if I were to just launch at a 60 degree inclination. When you factor in the rotation of Drew, that's actually going to bring my inclination down a little bit because it's impacting my velocity. Uh, so I'm going to overshoot by two degrees, throttle up, bring my flight data into view, set that over here. Um, so we've got my velocity, uh, craft performance, and my orbit data, which is going to be important. And throttle up, we'll light the engine. Lift off, get so far, velocity is locked, we're going to hit uh, I think 2,000 meters above sea level, and that's when I'm going to start my gravity turn. Uh, and the hybrid engine... Oh, please tell me I turned the engine. So I didn't. Did I not? Oops. Okay, problem has already arised, which is that this engine 
does not gimbal. Okay, let's uh, let's go back to the drawing board real quick because I forgot to turn the gimbling on. That's silly. Oops. Uh, doo -doo -doo. This guy, gimbling on. How does that impact the price? Barely impacts the price. One degree of gimbling range? Yeesh, that's not very maneuverable. Okay, let's try that again. Same thing as we did before. Literally, the only thing that's changed is that the rocket is actually going to be able to gimbal. Uh, go away. Back to where I was. Uh, 30, 28. Okay. And launch. Nice. This time we can actually control our ascent. Perfect. So we're going to wait till 2,000 meters like before, and then pitch over and start our gravity turn into orbit. We're at 1,000 meters at this point. ratio at uh, at 2. I want to make sure that my first ratio, ratio isn't getting ahead of me. Uh, it's good. Altitude's good. Time to apolypse this is good. Bring it down a little bit more. Alright, everything is looking nominal. We are at 2,500 25,000 meters. Time to apoapsis. Time to apoapsis is 70. Coming up on 80 seconds. Throwing down. All right. Launch profile looks great. Oh, I need to get rid of all of these other satellites so that the game will actually run and not crash. So our target altitude is going to be 120 kilometers for our orbit. Uh, we're going to do a mostly circular orbit. It's always a little bit off. You know, it's always a little eccentric, but that's the target orbit. So I'm going to wait until my apoapsis gets close. I'll start pitching right now. And I'm going to detach my bearings now that we're out of the atmosphere. Shed some weight. Okay, so we are close to orbit at this point. Um, orbital velocity is 1300 and we are, let's see, if this is 30, so you'll see that the velocity vector for my orbit is not the same as the velocity vector for my craft. So I'm actually going to increase the heading a little bit, a point more northward and try and drag that down. So going to throttle up. That'll push our apoapsis a little higher than our target, but that's fine. Make sure we've got plenty of room, uh, plenty of room in the stage here. All right, and our next stage is burning good. Yeah, I like the. Uh, this is using stock engine overhaul, so there's some new fuel types, and the fuel that I'm running in this engine is uh, nitrous oxide and kerosene, which has a nice, cool-looking red exhaust plume, uh, which I really dig. So that's been. That's a fun little addition. Orbital velocity is good, although we are a little low from where I would like to be. It's pretty close to 60. I think we'll, we'll take it. We're going to lock prograde now. Uh, the reason we're going to lock prograde is I want to make sure that we don't drop back into the atmosphere, so I'm going to point the nose up a little bit. Keep the nose, nose pointed up a little bit. Really don't want to fall back into the atmosphere. Trying to. Okay. Speeding up time a little bit. Five times speed. 
And starting to come back now, but we're pushing that velocity vector out there, so I think we're okay. I'm gonna go ahead and point towards the horizon. I think it's fine if we drop, you know, another four kilometers because we're over our target orbit, which is kind of a, by design. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get into orbit just fine. We'll have plenty of delta V to make corrections. 60. Okay, so we are in orbit. Uh, gonna make a correction burn here at 60 kilometers. Drop our apoapsis down to an appropriate 120. 120. There we go. We will lock that in, set the engines to auto burn, and time warp to the burn net. Okay, engines lit. Right on target, perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna go to our apoapsis. Zoom in here. And we wanna increase our periapsis to match. We're gonna do our circularization burn here. Whoops, too far. Okay, right there is about as good as it's gonna get. Lock and burn. Beautiful. Okay, so we are in about as circular of an orbit as it's going to get. Let's look at our orbit details. 59.26. That's pretty good. Um, where's our ascending node? Probably somewhere here. Maybe I can make a little bit of a correction. Okay. I'm going to get a little closer to a 60 degree orbit. And then I'm going to use... Uh, the actual separation force for these satellites to push it the rest of the way. So we've got this guy sitting here. And slow down time a little bit. <laughs> Separate the satellites. Uh oh. Got an interstage floating away. Um, are they all going? Hold on. That's weird. This guy's not... <laughs> Just ram the satellites. Did this guy not separate? We got one still attached. That's weird. Uh-oh. Is this guy, like, stuck stuck? Does he not have an interstage? How does that happen? Well, shoot. Okay. So we've got one satellite still attached to the launcher, which is not ideal. But the other nine deployed okay. Let's see if I can maybe... I think if I destroy this part... I'm going to separate. Uh, well, it technically separated. That's for sure. Because there is nothing left of the satellite. Okay, so I think we only have nine satellites in orbit now. But that's fine. We'll save and exit. Uh, let's check the day. It is 15 days. Save and exit. <laughs> yeah, bumping into the stats Falcon 1 style. Not not the ideal mission profile, but that's fine. Um, yeah, let's see if I can correct that for the next launch. Uh, here we go. Go away. Go away. Go away. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yep, that guy is not attached properly. There we go. Okay, it won't let me change the link, but that's fine. So now it's actually attached properly. That should separate as well. 1624, basically nothing has changed other than that. Okay, looks good. I think we're good to go for our next launch. So we're going to go ahead and launch the craft. Um, let's see, we launched that last one at 20, was it 2200. So one hour has passed between the last launch. So what we're going to do is time warp. 
16, 17, that's three days, four, five, six, and one more day, seven. Okay, yeah, so that's, we have now moved seven days. I'm going to wait for 2200 to roll around. 20, 21, 22, and 23, 24. Okay. So now we are two hours out of phase with that last launch. It's important to note when we're building a satellite constellation, we want each launch to be a little bit out of phase with the last one. Also going to increase the uh, variation for my heading from 28 to 25, which should put us on the right course earlier. Go ahead and get this information panel set up over here, and we'll go ahead and launch. We have nothing else to look at. This mission is going to be the exact same as the last one, so I'm going to run it at five times speed because there's nothing new. time in game, increase my sensitivity. So let's do the orbital insertion burn. We're going to need a lot of delta V. Lots and lots of delta V. Not recommended. That was what I was afraid of. Arrival time, burn time. Yeah, burn time is longer than our arrival time, which is a problem that means we're going to have to burn kind of upwards again. Well, I'm doing it manually then. Throttle up. Pitch up. And five times, five times time acceleration. Second orbital launch. Eighty seconds to apoapsis. Get into orbit now. And kill our thrust. We still got 1200 meters per second of delta V, which is plenty. I'm going to do the same correction maneuver here. Drop our apoapsis to the target. circularize our orbit at the periapsis now. Same deal, same deal. Bring that up to 120. That's 112, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20. Oh, just a little short. 
That's fine. That's close enough. Within a kilometer is fine. And circularize. Boom. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. Actually, let's check. Inclination is a little high this time. So 25 degrees was too much. Um, interesting. Good to know. Going to make a inclination correction here. Drop this down to 60. Like so. Lock. Auto bearing. Yada yada yada. Orbital maneuvering. Okay. And with that, I think we are ready to deploy our stack of satellites. Watch them go. Yay, and they all separated properly this time. Actually take control of one of these guys. See what it looks like when they spread out. So they're going to kind of bump into each other, but then they, they make this nice little, little line here. Um, a lot like Starlink. They're going to spread out into their own orbits. And then there goes our main craft. Let's see if I can select it. Take control. I'm actually going to deorbit this guy. I blew up the last one. I'm going to deorbit this one. So I don't want any space junk in my sandbox. It slows down my computer big time. Fine. We can just watch this thing hit the atmosphere now. It's going to get real hot now. There it is. Boom. Gone. Excellent. All right. Well, that is a successful second launch. We're going to do one more today. Second exit. That will end it for this set of missions. I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do another mission, a different type of mission though. It's gonna be science focused. Uh, might take that plane, take off and fly around again. So that was the second mission. That brings our total up to 2.6 million spent on this constellation. And now we have to wait another seven days. So we gotta wait till day. 29 before we can do our next launch um so the reason i'm doing uh time between launches is to kind of make it a little bit more realistic um because no one can launch like nine rockets in a day um which you know most of us actually end up doing that anyway when we play the game we don't really like time warp a week ahead between launches we just launch whenever we feel like it which is not what i'm trying to do i'm actually trying to make this realistic somewhat so our first one was at um, it was a 22, so the second one was at 2400, so the next one will be at 02, 23, 0, 1, and coming up on 2. Okay, so this is our next launch window. Go ahead and set this to... 27, kind of split the difference here. Level up. Launch. And we'll take them up. Go ahead and pull up the information here. Okay. Good. 
this flight profile is looking a lot better. Bearing separation, so those guys are going away. Should take it the rest of the way. Okay, time to apolapsis is looking good. Pitch all the way down from this last bit. second engine and we are good to go. So I think because we're at 145 kilometers I should be able to just kind of let this thing cruise and point it at the horizon and it'll drop it'll drop our apoapsis back because we don't have the thrust to weight ratio for this. Um, I think we should be fine. Though I was throttled down for a good portion of that burn so I should probably pitch up again anyway because I screwed it up like an idiot. velocity though is pretty close to what we wanted it or our inclination is pretty close to what we wanted it that is right on 30 so at least we got that part right okay i think we're still good though yeah we're still in the clear That was a little better. I think we saved, yeah, 3% fuel, which is a little better, but that eh, could be better. Um, definitely want to refine that launch program, maybe actually put some busy code behind it to standardize it, make it a little cleaner. There we go. Lock. Lock. There we go. Auto burn. Finished off this mission strong. Details. Oh, we are right on the money, guys. 60.65. I'm going to point radially. We'll do anti normal. Uh, just to push those satellites a little bit. And. There they go. So that is our last payload for these missions. And these separated a little nicer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Although they might start bumping into each other now. There we go. It's because I was time warping. Now they're bouncing around. Oh, you didn't miss too much. We're just doing the same mission three times over. Launching satellites. Okay, so those are away. And that is a successful mission launch. Save and exit. Now, next one that I want to do is we need to collect some more science. And I have a plane that's on the runway. Hopefully I saved it. Let's save this crap before we change. Overwrite, yep. Oh, da -da 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 -da. What, what did I call it when I saved it? Was it the, the ultralight? Was it this guy? Yeah, this was the guy, although. We need to give it a new paint job. So this was the... Actually, we keep the primary rotor shunts. Uh, this was the first jet that I built earlier in the series. Um, there we go. That looks a lot better. So what we're going to do is slap a couple barometers on it. And gather some science because we need more science data. More, more, more. Um... Let's see. Barometer. I've got four barometer parts here to add. Gotta tweak them just a little bit before I add them, though. Because I screwed up how these part connections work. There we go. We'll add barometer number one right there. And rotate it around. So that's one. We're going to add 
barometer number two. Same one, other side, and there's a um, there's a reason we've got to do these manually. I can't use the mirror tool for these because they're a little special. Each one has a unique visi code that distinguishes it from the other ones, which is important. Um, because the way these work is it records uh, science points based on your altitude and the air pressure. And then um, once you've recorded it, you can't use it again, so it deactivates. And if you were to like put one of these guys on there and then just do four-way symmetry, what would end up happening is as soon as you used one, all of them would deactivate because they're all running the same code. And they all have the same names and everything, so it would break. So what we're doing is we're adding four unique ones, and we'll just do it manually. They're not going to impact the flight profile too much, so if they're a little off, it's not a big deal. Turn off. There we go. Um, so yeah, we're going to add four of these barometers on here. We're going to take four uh, measurements on this mission get those sweet sweet science points and then we will come back to the launch pad or not the launch pad but the uh, the runway land and collect the data and because we're gonna land with the data that'll actually give us more than if we um, transmit it um, kind of like in KSP if you recover the science parts they give you more value so that's what we're gonna do it's a little cheesy um, kind of the way we're doing this because so far we've only ever done one science experiment and it's put barometers on a plane um, but it's the best way to get a lot of science quickly so I think let me double check barometer 4 barometer 1 barometer 2 and oh, this is that same barometer 4 as well did I screw this up oh these are both barometer 4 well I screwed it up Hold on. There we go. That's the right one. One more time. Turn it around. Okay. I think we are good to go. Let's do it. Ooh, that's a problem. Back heavy? Uh oh. Hold on. Uh, actually, before we do that, I want to make sure that I've got these working right. So I'm going to test them. Barometer one. Is that recorded properly? I think that recorded properly. Let's wait for the message to go away before I turn the other ones on. Okay. Yep. And barometer three. Make sure it works. Cool, so they all work. End flight. Save and exit. Yeah, F in the chat for that jet being super back heavy. Um, let's look at our center of mass. Yep, so we will do one simple thing. Drop the forward offset of the rear landing gear back so it's actually going to be balanced. Okay, I think that'll do. Let's do a control surfaces check because I'm always a little cautious that I screwed this up. Okay, that works. Ailerons work. Uh, is everything backwards? Are these backwards? Okay, pitch down. Yep. Okay, my pitch is backwards. See, this is why we do. This is why we do pre-flight checks, guys got to fix that before I launch or I will be screwed up uh, invert no don't be inverted and then invert my yaw yeah not again geez <laughs> yeah the first time I flew this plane I probably the, what probably happened is I flew this plane that first time it was screwed up I saved it and then I didn't change it and so it's still screwed up uh, which is totally that's totally my fault. Okay, we're gonna drive this thing out to the actual runway. Do I have lights on this? Did I put lights on this? I don't think I did. 
No, no lights means no nighttime flights. We're gonna have to wait for the daytime, which is fine. I'm not gonna need this. We'll want my nav bomb though. Try not to flip over. Try not to flip over. Try not to flip over. Stay upright. Stay upright. Go back. There we go. Time warp up. This is just going to take a minute to get out to the runway. Okay, we're pretty close now. Almost the runway. Here we are. Okay, cut the engines. Get the brakes. Accidentally roll the plane over like an idiot. There we go. Just line it up with the runway and then we will time warp until the dawn before we launch. Okay. We turn the engine off. And we are not going to wait a week between the last rocket launch and this launch. Because uh, we're not launching a rocket. We don't need to wait a week. This is just an airplane. We've already built this airplane. It already exists. Um, so there's no need to wait a week just to launch a simple plane. I'm going to go ahead and pin all of these buttons uh, windows. So that I have a quick way of accessing them. This is button number one, button number two, button number three, button number four. We'll have them all there. And then I'm going to take control from the Druid's point of view. Okay. I don't have any flight panels here, which is a bummer, but that's okay. We don't really need them. Um, I do need to make sure that my engine is on, though. And we're off. warping effect they have here. That looks really cool. Okay, in the cockpit. Stay on the runway. Slowly, slowly accelerating. I forgot how slow this thing is. And we're off the ground. Pull up our landing gear. Now, I'm trying to remember what our, uh, what else we've done so far. We've done 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,500, and 3,000. So I think the next one's going to be 3,500. So we'll have to fly up a bit. Looking good so far. Yep, yeah, looking good. Keep our nose pitched up. Maybe we're going to be able to make it. I'm actually, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get to altitude on this thing because it really does not have a ton of performance. Um, hopefully, it'll be kind of awkward if this thing isn't able to make it to 3,500 feet or meters, 3,500 meters. Okay. Uh, I don't know why we're rolling. Oh, rolls inverted too. Well, that's. Of course, the roll's inverted. Why wouldn't the roll be inverted? Better planes than I could ever make. Oh no, this plane is not. This plane is not a good plane. This plane barely works. So we're at 3,000. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fire off. No, 3,500. 3,500. I've got 300 more feet, and then we'll shoot off number one, record its data. Uh, 3,500. We are at 12.8. Okay. That's our first barometer, so I can get rid of this guy. Next up is barometer number two. At 4,000. 
Okay, so I guess we'll have the we'll have the capacity to get up to altitude. 4500, 11.4, and I am rounding to the nearest tenth. So I know it says 11.38. I said 11.4. I'm an engineer. Engineers round to the ones place basically. If you don't believe me, I'm serious. Like in my engineering classes, it's like significant figures. Uh, just round to the ones place. It doesn't matter. If we overshot our altitude, we want to take an, a sample at 5,000. Deserve more suns. Thank you, Amando. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know if I would say I deserve it, but I certainly would like it. Uh, so I appreciate the comp. I appreciate the compliment. I take that. I take that to heart. 5,000. 10.79. 10.8. 10.8. Okay. So those are our science samples, and I am still, uh, shoot, that's not good. Do not, I do not want to be in a flat spin in this plane. Uh, da, da, da. okay, so I need to get back to the launch center with inverted roll controls, which is going to drive me absolutely nuts, because every time I want to correct, I actually make it worse. Fly from the cockpit view for a little bit here. We want to make sure that we are aligned with the runway, which means we need to be heading uh, directly west. Like that. I actually use my yaw a little bit here. Um, let's, uh, let's do this pitch. Unlock flight controls. Okay. Love how broken the yaw is. Like, that is not what that is not what yaw is supposed to do. Why does that always seem to happen? Well, why are my controls all inverted? I don't know. But every single one of the controls was inverted, and then I fixed the yaw and the pitch. But my roll was still inverted. But it wasn't inverted when I tested it on the ground. So I do not know what's going on with this plane. It is. It's been giving me problems the whole time. Uh, I've got it under control now for the most part. It's just, you kind of have to like mentally think, okay, roll right to roll left, roll left to roll right, and kind of like remind myself that it's backwards, which is annoying, but I can still do it. Like you'll see me, I'll be like rolling a little bit to the right, and then instead of correcting, I'll make it worse and then correct it, and that's because I'm forgetting what I'm doing. There is no other excuse. Okay. We are getting close to the launch site. Deploy our landing gear. Drop our throttle back. Just try and keep it nice and steady the rest of the way in. Drop our throttle pretty much all the way back at this point. Try and get in alignment with the runway here. Ooh, might overshoot. Might overshoot this. Might overshoot this. Yeah, I'm having trouble. Whoop. Okay, we are down. Turn the brakes on. Nope, nope. Stay on the runway. Stay on the runway. Don't break, don't break, don't break. Woo! Little hop, skip, and a jump over here. And technically a landing. Barely a landing. Yeah, not not smooth like butter. That was that was a little rough. I'm not gonna lie, that was a little rough. But we got down on the runway. Well, we got down near the runway, not on the runway per se, because we are you know definitely in the grass over here. But nothing's broken, which is good. The pilot survived. I'm just going to go ahead and slap the brakes on, open up the canopy, let our guy uh, get out and stretch a little bit. Walk the wing tips. Cool. All right. Well, that is a successful science mission. So we got 12.8, 12.1, 11.4, and 10.8, which, let's do some quick maths here in my phone calculator. 12.8 plus 12.8. 1 plus 10.4 or 11.4 yeah 11.4 plus 
Shoot, I just deleted it. Hold on one second while I do some quick math. 12.8, 12.1, 11.4, and 10.8. Equals 47.1 times 2. We get a multiplier because we recovered it. And that gives us 94.2 science points for the mission. Which is pretty good. I think that's going to be enough to get us to the next tech now. Uh, sick. That's a mostly successful mission right there. So, with that, I think that's it. That's all I had planned was to launch those satellites and get some more science points. Next live stream, I'm going to do uh, show you guys the tech tree, show you guys what we've unlocked, and uh, start planning a bigger mission. Because what those satellite constellations I just launched are going to do, it's going to give me a base of income. Uh, if you watched the last video I put out with that first satellite launch, um, the three launches that I just did are going to increase that. So I did three launches with ten satellites in three different orbits, but they all have the same inclination and apoapsis, so that constellation is now going to generate uh, a constant stream of income, which is going to be pretty sick, because that means I'm not going to be totally dependent on contracts for income, and I can start doing some more ambitious missions. Um, but with that, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate guys chatting with me and watching as I work. And uh, I will see you all later. You guys have a good one.